All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Mary Jane Mates. How are you doing, Mary? Great. <laughs> Wonderful. It's nice to be back. Yeah. And where are you today? What part well, of I'm in Michigan, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm here in San Diego. So... Um, so, um, Mary, as you know from last time, she's a very dynamic speaker known for her storytelling ability. Um, she has, she advises companies and executives. And what we're going to talk today is particularly about executive presence and how to build executive presence. So, first off, uh, Mary Jane, um, what, what, what is the definition of executive presence? Because some people would think that's just like a big domineering person who's, you know, who looks like they're you know, all dressed up and who just commands like attention the minute they walk in the room. Well, there's probably some truth to that. Mm -hmm. um, it's the idea that uh, someone walks into the room and there is a poise, there's a confidence, there is an authenticity about them that just communicates that they've got it together. They're able to quickly engage people, they connect with people, and they have that thing that sort of broadcasts to others that they're the one in charge. Mm -hmm. You know, they're somebody that's uh, a cut above. They've got what it takes. And that's obviously something that you work with people. That's something that can actually be learned and taught, right? Uh, that maybe it's not, it doesn't come naturally to everybody. So how do you start maybe working with, with somebody or with people who say, listen, Mary Jane, that's just not me. That's just not who I am. I mean, I, I know I've got all the skill. I've got the knowledge and stuff, but it's just, that's just not who I am. Yeah, well, um, a lot of times people say that's not who you are. And I say, that's right. It's not who you are right now, and that's why you're here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because if it were who you were, if it were if it is who you are, you wouldn't be here. So I always ask people, you know, to um, usually take some kind of an assessment mm -hmm. uh, where other people assess them, so they get feedback from people they work with, uh, people they interact with, might be their peers, might be people they work with, um, might be their boss, might be any any number of people that could um, offer them some. Uh, feedback and using that feedback that gives them a lot of information with which to if they're working with me for us to move forward with them and one of the things that you mentioned there is uh you know somebody who communicates or has that authenticity so how do you help somebody so if somebody says well me or mary jane that's not me and i don't want you to turn me into somebody who's not authentic or real so how do you how do you help somebody develop that, but at the same time, retain their authenticity? Mm. Well, um, there are, when, when I think of executive presence, there are really three mm. aspects of it. Right. So these are the three things that we actually go looking for. And those three aspects are how you act. Now, this mm. is something that people can assess for themselves. In other words, what are your values? Do you even know what they are? And if you don't know what they are, maybe it's important for you to let's, you know, to start identifying what are your values? Do you act in accordance with those values? In other words, do you walk your talk or do you say one thing and do another? Is there a sense of consistency about you so that when you say something, people will believe it because they know that you and your word are one and the same. So there's definitely that element of authenticity when it comes from walking your talk. Um, there is, there's a whole lot more to that than, you know, how you act than that. Sure. That's one piece of it. Another has to do with your level of competence. Mm -hmm. You know, how, what is your depth and your breadth of knowledge? If you say you are an expert, what kind of an expert are you? Are you really an expert? At what level are you an expert? And in a variety of situations, are you coming across that way? Um, mm -hmm. it, what is your, um, are you someone, and this is a great, this is a great, uh, what I want to say, indication to people who are in a position to judge. Mm -hmm. And by judge, I mean those who look out at the people they have maybe working with them and say, okay, if I'm going to evaluate somebody with executive presence, what is it that I'm looking for? Right. Well, one of the big things they look for is, does this person have the ability to maintain a sense of real calm in pressure situations? Mm -hmm. 
because they know that if they can do that, they still are able to think under the gun and they can make right decisions. Um, and it's interesting. Perfect example. Can I give you an example of that? Yes, please do. I, and I think people listening to this will will be very familiar with this person, but Sally Sullenberger, that yep. um, U.S. Airlines pilot that landed on the Hudson River after he, you know, his plane ran into a flock of Canadian geese mm-hmm. taking out both engines. And overnight, he became an overnight hero. And a lot of people think, well, it's because he saved the life of 158 people. Nobody even got hurt. Yet, well, that was obviously a huge Mm -hmm. part of it. But the other part was, is that he could maintain such a sense of calm when he knew he had no engines. And like, where do I land? And even though he was being asked to go back to the airport, he had the wherewithal to realize, to judge that there's no way he would make it and that his mm-hmm. best bet was the Hudson River. I mean, that was a man who exercised real executive presence. That's probably the number one quality. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing there is, and for those who've seen him interviewed and actually in my, my, he's a regular at my, the fa- my father-in-law's coffee shop where he, um, up mm. in Northern California, but I think the thing that they say and uh, people will say, coming back to what you said earlier, is he doesn't come across as you know larger than life and bombastic or anything. Quite the opposite, in fact. But it's that quiet, confident calmness. So I think that's the important thing for people. If you think you have to be some larger than life figure, you don't. You just have to have the confidence and, as you say, to be able to remain calm under pressure. Right. And be who you say you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there are an awful uh, lot of people that preach one thing and act another. Sure. Well, that is not authenticity. I mean, is there an element things- of vulnerability? That's another aspect. I mean, are you are you able and willing to really share of yourself? There are people that want to receive from other people all the time, and they're always looking for other people to be vulnerable, but they themselves do not put themselves. It takes a strong, confident Um, somewhat fearless person to put themselves out there in a very authentic way without Mm -hmm. worrying about, oh, what is somebody going to think of me? Well, I'm just going to share with you. Here's where I made the mistake. Here's what I learned. Here's where we erred. But this is where we did it differently Mm -hmm. the next time. So. And I think that's a good point because I, I do, I do think also that sometimes people confuse uh, you know, being authentic and, you know, being vulnerable with just, like oversharing everything or talking constantly about yourself and they're not the same thing, right? No, they're not. No, they're, we're not looking for someone that is um, egocentric. We're looking for someone that if they share, they're sharing for the purpose of helping the other person, Mm -hmm. not elevating themselves. And you talk about it, it cultivating charisma, right? And I always find that it, that's an interesting concept, right? Because uh, again, you know, most people would say, well, charisma is something you either have or you don't, right? So how do you help people uh, maybe uncover the charisma that they don't know they have? Well, it's interesting. I think if people can, um, first of all, communicate and trust themselves. My goal is to help people, uh, number one, uncover blocks What are those Mm -hmm. limiting beliefs that are blocking you? That's number one. We've got to take a look at that. What are the fears that might be running you that are getting in your way of being authentic, that are getting in your way of of being confident, of actually being willing to step out, learn, take the risk? Um, I'll give you just a perfect example. This last week, I worked with a group of leaders. This was strictly on speaking in front of Mm -hmm. groups. I mean, that's a place where sometimes uh, for the most seasoned leader, it can be daunting depending on to whom they're speaking. And um, first of all, I get them sharing about themselves. And I ask them to give an example of a time when you were really embarrassed or that you took a risk and that you, what you learned from it. And of course, what they discover are two things. Number one is when something gets personal, sometimes it gets very interesting. So the Mm. feedback they get is very positive, very positive. So they realize, gosh, I'm just telling them something about myself. And they really like that. So in some ways, it helps one feel better 
about presenting themselves in front of a group. The other aspect is, this was the other thing I really worked on, besides what are those things to calm anxiety, and that is, um, how do you, um, I've lost my train of thought here for a moment, uh, prepare. What is it right. that you actually do to prepare? Because confidence mm -hmm. and looking the part are two critical pieces of being successful and having that sense that you belong, you've got what it takes, that you're the leader. Mm -hmm. And so it's the importance of preparation. I think it was Barbara Corcoran who is on Shark Tank. She's the um, yes. uh, real estate mm -hmm. you know, mogul. She mm -hmm. said... Uh, she said that it was two things, confidence and looking the part. She said, you better look the part, but you better be confident. And this is what I mean by confidence. And I loved it when she said this because I've been teaching this stuff for years. Same thing. She said, you want to prepare like crazy, prepare, 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 prepare like you've never prepared before. Because she said, it doesn't matter. People won't know how much you've prepared. They won't yeah. care how much you've prepared, but something about you will be different. You will have the confidence that when you speak, you can move in several different directions because you are so prepared. You're now focusing on communicating with the other guy or with your audience or whoever is at the table than you are with being worried about yourself. Yeah, and I think that's, that's fantastic advice. And I think on the flip side, uh, people would know when you haven't prepared though. I mean, they may not know how much you have prepared when you come when you do a great job, um, but they'll certainly know if you haven't prepared. Yes, they do. And when I always tell people this, if you're not prepared, you really have to think of it this way. You are wasting other people's life because our mm -hmm. time, how we spend our time is how we spend our life. And if you're wasting my time, you're really taking a piece of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you better yeah. come prepared. So it's a value. Yeah. And I think one of the most interesting things, and it was another guest uh, of mine some time back that uh, that we started discussing this concept of the imposter syndrome. Right. And I and it's really it's really um, I found it very profound. And, and you know, I, I talk to people about it all the time. But I think that's one of the things that holds people back more than anything. I think, you know, like you're saying, if you have come, you know, if you know your subject, if you've done all these great things, but then the moment you step out there as this, uh, as as a leader or whatever, then you suddenly go, well, uh, maybe maybe my experience isn't that great. Maybe, maybe I don't know as much as these other people. Maybe are they going to see me as a fraud? And people like totally undo themselves. Mm -hmm. They do. So I, one of the things we work on is retraining the brain. You have to mm -hmm. retrain your brain for positive thinking in a positive way. And I'm not suggesting that you just, you know, use positive affirmations because you sure. use positive affirmations. But if you don't actually believe what you're saying, <laughs> then you are actually going to do more damage to yourself mm -hmm. than if you really believe what you're saying. So choose something about yourself that you can believe in. For instance, I know my business. I mm -hmm. am... I am knowledgeable in my field. I may not be the most knowledgeable, but I am knowledgeable. I've been asked a question or I've been asked to speak, whatever it might be. And because I'm knowledgeable and I'm prepared and I'm bringing my best and my goal is to give them the best of everything I've got. And you go in there with that focus, that the focus is on giving the audience or the people at the table or the other person, everything you have that's the best of you, you focus on that. And I have yet to see somebody that's focused on that that hasn't really done an amazing job because you mm -hmm. experience it as the person they're speaking to. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's fantastic advice for for people uh, because sometimes I mean if you think too broadly you you kind of undo yourself but if you really focus in as you say on the things that you really know about and then uh, also uh, understand that there's a reason why people have asked you to do things there's a reason why you, you know you're you're in that position and and to embrace it as opposed to let it undo you. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing, if I may share this, yes, one please. of the things I wrote a book many, many years ago called mm -hmm. The Art of Yielding Questions with Finesse. And it really was a module in it. One of the very first training programs I ever, I mean, we're talking over mm -hmm. 30 years ago. And one of the um, things that I always tell people is be prepared. 
as I mentioned a minute ago, but yeah. write down, if you're going into a meeting, you write down every question that you think somebody's going to ask you about whatever it is you're talking about or the discussions mm -hmm. about, and they turn to you, what do you think they're going to ask you? What do you hope they ask you? What do you hope nobody asks you? And then you write out bottom line responses with maybe a quick, a quick little example, mm -hmm. if you need that. And then you rehearse those questions and answers just as though you were giving a speech. You're not giving a speech. You're just preparing. And if right. you don't know what they'll ask, who knows what they might ask? Who knows the people that are going to be there? It has some idea as to what these people may ask you and then prepare for that. You go in prepared. They may never ask you the exact question that you've written down, but I guarantee you, and I say this from personal experience, when you are that prepared, they don't necessarily ask the exact question, but oftentimes they come really close and then you're prepared and it you come off like, yeah, and you know that's what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and that's such great advice because, I mean, we've all seen occasions and where somebody is kind of derailed when they're asked a question and later on they're kicking themselves because they're like, well, I know that I have a good answer to that question. I mean, why did, I don't know why I let that, but it was, as you say, because it, it came as a surprise to them. Right. It knocked them off course, but the reality is with a little bit more forethought, they could have handled it. No problem. That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, listen, um, uh, Mary Jane, uh, this has been great. We're bumping up against the end of our time here. Um, all of Mary Jane's information is in her in her bio, which will be below this. But before we go, as always, I'd just like you to tell people a little more about yourself anyway. Well, may I share just a tiny bit about a program that I have that's going to be starting this year? Absolutely. It's called Ignite Platinum. And Ignite Platinum is a six-month program. Originally, it was going to be a year-long program, but I definitely listen to what people tell me, and they say, oh, it's, 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 the year's a long time to commit. So six months, it's a combination. So I'm using a variety of learning modes from virtual learning to live events to coaching to mastermind, Facebook, flash calls. I mean, a variety of things. It's going to be very concentrated uh, for people to develop. They're interested in this topic of executive presence. And that is exactly what they're going, we're going after. So when they enter a room, they can connect, they can engage. And they, the, the other thing is, is I want them to be able to leave people wanting more from them. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a sales call, whether it's a business meeting, whatever it is, um, they can walk in with the confidence and the credibility that they need to get the job done. And so if they're interested Definitely. in that, they can um, give me a call. Can I give you my phone number? You can, absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, they can call 800-851-2270, 800-851-2270, or they can email me at maryjane at maryjanemapes.com. Excellent. Well, Mary Jane, as always, it's a it's a pleasure talking with you, and I highly recommend people to check out the the course that uh, that Mary Jane is going to be doing because, quite frankly, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of inauthenticity out there. People are getting overwhelmed. If you want to stand out, invest a little bit in yourself and make yourself stand out, and the rewards will be fantastic because people are looking for people who are authentic, are poised, who know what they're talking about. There's so much nonsense out there that give yourself give yourself the best opportunity to succeed. So I highly recommend that you check out Mary Jane's course. Thank you, John. All right, uh, John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And Mary Jane from uh, out in Kalamazoo. As I said, it's always a pleasure and I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. All right, Bye. thanks so much.